We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. I'm in the back dog yard, building a little deck right there off the house. And then got my backup generator right there. And over here, I've got my three propane tanks for a backup generator to the backup generator. And the concrete has a slope to it, so we're building a little mini deck to hold the propane tanks to the backup generator for the backup generator. So. The big generator right there, 30KW, that'll run 100% of the house, everything at once. If we had an earthquake and we lost our natural gas, that would then go offline and I would have to resort to the solar system and the solar system will run all my criticals, refrigerators, things like that. But if I had a lot of snow, overcast, then I want a backup generator to recharge the batteries that is the solar side of my house safety backup and that back up to the solar are those three tanks. So the generators that run off those three tanks actually just charge the battery banks so that the whole house can run on battery and it's the backup to the solar. So back up to my backup, back up. <laughs> back to work. My dog entrance to the dog wash. They can go in and get food, bath, or they can come into the dog yard. This will be a fake grass, so they have the little pee pad area. And if they go down their own stairs, they'll go through that doggy door, it goes into their own private bedroom. The things we do for our pets. <laughs> this is a roll of fake turf for the dogs to go to the bathroom on because I don't like them going in my new grass. So I made them a doggy yard with their own bedroom going into the house. So let's install the grass. <laughs> Got heavy for a second on those stairs. All right, that's one. My daughter Ashlyn drying up the concrete so the glue will stick. Probably be on that for a half hour, 45 minutes get it all the way dry, and then we'll get to laying down the grass for the dogs. Not quite done yet, but we are trimmed into the deck that's holding my emergency propane backup generator supply to the other generator backup that's running on natural gas. I'm gonna build a little dog run underneath there with a couple doggy doors. I'm gonna make that deck watertight. There is an icicles coming between the Trex top. It's all rubber membrane it. Take the stairs down here. Got some handrails to do to keep the dogs from peeing on the generator. This was built up so I could put a handrail around my AC units that are going on these pipes coming out of the wall the dogs like to pee on everything so I got it up off the floor and I'll put a handrail around it so they can pee on the grass all they want <laughs> back to work
All right, so I'm putting in multiple chemical treatment systems. I don't want to babysit this and do it myself. So I'm putting in a commercial grade chemical system that automatically adjusts the pH as needed. I have uh, muriatic acid injection, which are these two units to lower the pH. It'll be automated on these two control systems right here. And on the bottom, I have chlorine injection. The chlorine is what keeps the chemical, the pool clear, free from bacteria. But the chlorine should almost never turn on because I actually want to use a salt system. So this actually shouldn't inject unless my salt system isn't keeping up. I have to use multiple salt systems because I've got so many gallons. Now I've phased my pool or staged my pool with multiple zones, the deep end, the middle, and the hot tub. That's why you'll see when I'm done, I'll have multiple three sets of filters for my pool instead of one but also for the heat and temperature zones. I want to be able to run my pool all year. So the deep end of the pool, I'm going to call it winterized mode, which will never be shut down, it's an all year pool. But I'm gonna take my moving floor platform that comes from the bottom of the pool, I'll take it all the way to the top. The top of that platform is gonna be foam and composite, and it's gonna be a great insulator. I'll pull it out of the water and make it a big upper patio. The side actually continues down and seals off the deep end for two reasons. One, safety side, I don't want kids getting under it. But there's another purpose of that, and that's so that I want to heat that 100,000 gallons of water on the super deep zone in the winter. But I do want to use the pool in the winter. So by bringing the platform up, sealing off the shallow end from the deep end, I will turn off the heat and that system has its own suction, its own returns, is completely isolated on every pipe, all the winterization, everything is isolated away as its own zone. So that in the winter, I don't have to heat it, but I still need to chemically treat it. So one side is for the deep zone of the pool to chemically treat it. It will be using less chemicals than the shallow side for several reasons. One, it will be blocked by the sun. Two, it will be extremely cold. Three, there won't be people in it in the winter. So it's gonna to go to almost no chemical usage whatsoever. The shallow side of the pool in the winter, which we'll use a lot, um, will have its own chemical system. Complete isolated filter, heater, temperature zone. I can set them at different temperatures. So that's kind of the long, version. I could get into so much more about the engineering, but I'm really excited about it. Uh, redundant chemicals, redundant heat, redundant filters, and the ability to not pay a high heating bill to run my pool in the winter by isolating off the 100,000 gallons. Uh, I'm sure that makes sense. If it doesn't, ask me in the comments. I'll try and answer as much as I can. I got a lot more to do. You guys go and drill. Get back to work. tying in the rest of the pool equipment. There are several stages here. All the circulation pumps, these are the heat exchangers. Off of each of the heat exchangers, I'm gonna hook on these quick connect unions with a O-ring in them. You're gonna see them all over, like up there, through here, everywhere I pass through walls, concrete floors, out to the pool. So if I ever have any maintenance, I can just quickly disconnect it and just replumb a section without cutting something that's difficult to reconnect. So I've got these quick unions, I can replace the section at any time. I'm gonna put these on the heat exchangers, on my inlet and outlet flows of all the pumps. Let's get this plumbed up, you guys know the drill, back to work. behind the scenes, uh, Tusa started as a framer on this job many months back. Framing got a little slow and he came back and asked if he could work for me. And he has been doing everything, helping me out along the way. So I wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you for Tusa helping me. He's been helping set tile, doors, windows, roofing, landscaping. It doesn't matter. He's just a hard, hard worker. He's been here for a long time. So like all this plumbing that I'm doing now, all the pumps in here, 
I got all the plumbing in here, um, but Tusa's been right with me the whole time in the background. He doesn't do pools, um, but he's a hard worker, so it's worked out great. He's cutting the pipes, cleaning them, prepping them. Then I can just focus on clapping together the plumbing and getting the system running. So I just want to let you know who is hiding behind the scenes. He usually runs away from the camera, so I got him today. You guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. This right here is just a series of the sensors that are going in, tying into the 1.2 million BTU heat exchangers. I've got three of them here, but in line coming out of it, I've got to have the inbound port. There's an outbound coming off the bottom, an inbound port that is for the water flow that goes to the IntelliChem system that actually just reads the chemicals as it flows through a little line. So that's the return line. This is an additional part I bought. This is a backup safety. This does not come with the system. This is a micro switch, essentially, that's on a flow paddle. So as the water flows through, the paddle moves up and down, triggers an open closed circuit that allows my pumps, that are my circulation grumpus pumps, to trigger a relay. I've got plumbed in way at the top. It's hard to see. There's one there. There's one there, there'll be a light on, one there, I've already got it wired. They're going to trigger a micro switch that will allow my grumpus pump to turn on to start pumping heat through the system. I don't want my circulation pump from my heat exchanger on my boilers to turn on if there's a water flowing. Several things that could cause the water flowing. If I forgot and left a valve closed, if I was doing maintenance on a filter and I didn't reopen it, I wouldn't want to kick the power back on, have the system think there's water, turn on heat that would stay stagnant. So this is an additional flow sensor with additional relays that I put in for in case I screw up. The other thing that can happen is if a pump went bad, if one of my pool pumps, you can see five of the six of them over there, if one of those failed, there is a circuit already designed in that recognizes that there's no power to that pump, which is the water pump, not the glycol pump from the boiler. But what if that pump went bad and there's still power to that pump? I want this flow switch to kill the system. I don't want several things to occur. I don't want the heat running. I also don't want my chemical injection system running. So I don't want anything injecting chemicals into a non-flowing system. So there's already some backup inside this IntelliChem. There is a flow sensor. You can see it in the bottom side of this. It's a similar switch, but that won't take care of the problem with my heating system. So the likelihood of these happening are pretty rare. If I left the valve closed and I turned the system back on after cleaning it, I'd hear the pump whining. I should figure it out. But I don't want to rely on my ears to know if there's a failure. I want to kick the system on and look up and see why aren't the lights operating, why isn't the heater going, why is everything offline. And real quickly I can see, oh, the valve is closed, open up the valve, get the flow running, everything will automatically start up. I don't need to reset anything or have a breaker trip. So that's what that is. This is the Chlorine generator, it's a salt generator, uses salt to create the chlorine to clean the pool. That will go up, goes back through some check valves. The feed lines right there are the chemical automatic injection feed. That one doesn't need it, it's a separate system. Typically you'll have one set of injection ports. I've got a secondary set of ports because I have a secondary pool chemical injection. So I've got two commercial injection systems for my chemicals. So that's a lot of talking. I've got a lot of pipes to do, a lot of water wiring to do. My backup, I feel really good about. So you guys know the drill. Back to work. <laughs> Finished. <laughs> We're done for the night. We've got the upper side done. We got wiring to do, a few things like that. Coming off this bottom side is going to be the filter systems. They gotta go down, run over, and tie into the lower pipes on this side. So we're halfway done with the white pipes. <laughs> that worked.
power's out at our house over there. Our new house generator fired up all automatic. The whole street's offline, so I'm sure the city will get the power back on soon. It's been a thunderstorm with snow. And uh, I did put some extra circuits and plugs outside so that my neighbors nearby there or our home we're living in now, the white one over there, can plug right into our house and we can power up the homes around us. So let's hope the city gets power back on. But in the meantime, I got all my tools to finish my house. Let's get back to work.